Hello everyone, this is Eagle News. I am Jeff Sanidad in Washington. It's Saturday, June 10, 2023, here in the nation's capital. The week's recap begins with the eastern United States and during the impact of the wildfire burning in Quebec, Canada. Health warnings have been put in effect due to dangerous air. Rosal Feria has the details. Smoke from wildfires burning in Canada turns the skies of east coast of U.S. orange. Millions of people in the eastern part of the U.S. wake up to health alerts as hazy streets await the morning traffic. Masks are back on commuters' faces as they try to protect themselves from inhaling harmful air. The Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, releases a statement saying that smoke from wildfires in Canada is pushing air quality into the unhealthy or worse categories. This in areas from the Mid-Atlantic through the Northeast and parts of the Upper Great Lakes. EPA encourages people living in these areas to check your air quality index throughout the coming days. Know your local air quality and what steps to take to reduce smoke exposure and protect your health. People are advised to pay attention to any health symptoms if you have asthma, COPD, heart disease, or are pregnant. Get medical help if you need it. Russell Feria from Washington, D.C., Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. In related story, wildfires are now also burning in Ontario as Canada struggles to contain the blazes plaguing its forests. Yolanda Espiras tells us more. Wildfires have reached the province of Ontario this week as residents in eastern Ontario have been asked to evacuate for their safety earlier this week. 21 active wildfires have begun burning around Centennial Lake, about 100 kilometers east of Ottawa. Residents in Greater Madawaska have set up precautionary evacuation areas. About 50 people have already been evacuated to safety. According to the province of Ontario, there are 31 active wildfires across its northeast region. 21 are not yet under control. Heavy smoke notices are now in effect for eastern Ontario and Quebec. Ontario's wildfire season is from April 1st to October 31st within which residents are cautioned to regularly check for burning restrictions, have a smoke warnings, and wildfire updates. Yolanda Aspiras, Toronto, Ontario, Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. In other news, Madison Avenue in New York City was covered in the colors of the Philippine flag as groups and spectators lined the streets in what it is known as the largest Independence Day parade outside the Philippines. Juan Soriano has the story. The 125th Philippine Independence Day parade is taking place along Madison Avenue in New York City. Festivities kicked off with a flag-raising ceremony and ribbon-cutting, along with remarks from Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and a proclamation read by New York City Mayor Eric Adams. Twenty-seventh to thirty-eighth streets were lined with spectators eager to show their love for the Philippines. Because I want to feel how I feel uh, like in the Philippines while I'm here in the United States. So I'm here in the Philippine Independence Parade. I want to celebrate the Philippine Independence Day because um, after seven years, this is the, the first, time. first time that I uh, again after seven years. Oh, I am so unbelievably proud to be a part of this celebration. 125 years of Philippine independence. And to be a part of a celebration, the largest one of its kind outside of the Philippines, celebrating Philippine independence, it's amazing. It was so wonderful to see such a huge crowd on a gorgeous, glorious day. It was like 
it was really meant to be. And to be able to not only spend it with one of my dear friends, Nina Pineda, but also my children, to see this and to, to hand it down to them, how, how much pride I have being Filipino, I think it was just a perfect day. Colors of the Philippines filled the streets with people not only waving the flag, but wearing it. Thank you. Philippine fashion made a statement. From the colorful costumes to traditional Filipiniana to the contemporary. 141 participant groups marched the parade route, including celebrities such as Miss Universe 2022 Arbani Gabriel. The parade culminated in a cultural festival with performances and delectable cuisine at the street fair. Very impressed with the Filipino American community here in New York. Uh, you can just see that how strong and how lively, and of course, there are what over 300,000 Filipino Americans living here in New York City, and we're all very proud of all of you. Congratulations for this big event. Joanne Soriano, New York, New York Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. Several stories from Thomas I like this today, from war casualties in Sudan to a plastic ban in Sri Lanka to rehabilitated turtles set free into French waters. All these and more on Correspondent at Large. And now news and commentary from around the globe. How much sense does war make? especially civil war. Take the situation in Sudan. You've got two generals in the country's military government. One heads up the army, the other runs the paramilitary, and they're fighting over who is the better one to run the country. And caught in the crossfire, the innocents, regular civilians, more than 850 have died so far. Other victims are like these children here and their caregivers, 280 of them, forced to flee this orphanage where they had been living. International Red Cross spokesman jean Christophe Sandoz says they had to be evacuated because, you see, the, the fighting was less than a kilometer away. It was really heartbreaking to see uh, all these children, some of them uh, having uh, mental health conditions, some other health conditions. Uh, to be to be there in the midst really of uh, conflict. For people who remain in Sudan, children and adults alike, they face a shortage of food. Medical care is almost non-existent. There are no medicines or supplies to care for the sick and injured. And the two sides, who each argue that they are the ones who should be governing the country, well, they, they can't even agree on a ceasefire so that much needed humanitarian aid can get to the people who need it. And when one is declared, both sides tend to violate it. In Sweden, an autonomous electric ferry is plying the waters between the islands and Stockholm. The Swedish capital is the first in the world to use the technology. Now there is a captain aboard the vessel, but he doesn't have to do much. He doesn't need to touch the controls or anything. The boat is equipped with all kinds of technology that can spot hazards and chart its course. A Norwegian company, it's called Torkhatten. Torkhatten built the boat carries about 30 people. Spokesman Eric Nielsen says running smaller ferries will be more convenient for the passengers. What that means is that we can have the same capacity, but instead of go going once an hour, we can go once every four minutes. The company hopes the ferry will encourage more Swedes to walk or cycle to work instead of taking the car. Now this is a sad sight. In Sri Lanka, wild elephants foraging in a plastic waste dump. The country is getting set to do something about the problem. It's launching a nationwide cleanup of plastic waste and soon to come will be new laws banning the sale of single-use plastics. The action comes after a spate of deaths of elephants and deer in the northeastern part of the island nation. Sadly, shrinking habitat has led to the pachyderms and other wildlife raiding villages and garbage dumps looking for food. And for more than a dozen loggerhead turtles in France, it's time to go home. Fifteen of the critters washed up on France's Atlantic coast this past winter. They were in pretty bad shape, had lung infections. The animals received treatment at an aquarium in western France. They were nursed back to health and this past week, 
Aquarium workers release the turtles into the Bay of Biscay. They'll remain there in the warm currents for the summer and then head back to the coasts of Africa or the Americas. I'll be back in seven days and until then I wish you all peace, joy and happiness in the ensuing week. Thomas I. Leichner's correspondent at large, Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. A lot of businesses shut down because of the pandemic. But one hairstylist in California made the leap to open her own salon amid very trying times. And with her newfound success, she looks to pay it forward by participating in a program that uses donated hair to make wigs for cancer patients. In Simi Valley, California, Eva Basdaliahe reports on Mind Your Business. The 10 to 12 inches of hair in this bag, it's on its way to Locks of Love, a nonprofit organization that makes wigs for cancer patients from donated hair, which in this case is mine. One of the best parts of Locks of Love is when you come in and you cut off your hair, it is completely a donation, it's absolutely free. We do it out of the goodness of our hearts, it's part of the process and we absolutely love it. We're giving it to people, kids, women, children, whoever, for to make wigs for people with cancer. And that's a huge thing, it's a huge deal and always willing to help any way I can. Part of it, yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, for those that have hair to donate, uh, I, don't, I don't have very much. Uh, if, if it was ever asked, I'd be like, sure, you can have a couple inches of hair. Like, I don't know what I can give, but for those that have hair and want to donate it, absolutely, yeah, it's fantastic. I wouldn't cut my own hair. I tend to feel like I care a little bit more about my hair and my style, and I don't like to see it messed up. I go to work every day. I don't really work from home very much. And plus, it gives me a reason to get out and go see my stylist. Looking back, the pandemic shaped people's outlook, whether on a small scale or by a large degree. I just didn't get cuts for a while. That's all it turned out for me. I just went kind of raggedy for a while for the pandemic. The pandemic definitely accelerated me being able to open my own business. It did help because a lot of places did have to close and whatnot. And it kind of gave me the motivation to to be able to open and do things and when other places we couldn't. I'm very grateful and very blessed that I was able to open the business and work hard every day to keep it open. <laughs> Many hair salons had to shut down due to the pandemic, but as is often the case, necessity helps others to take a leap forward to pursue a dream that had previously been put on hold. Eva Basayahe, Simi Valley, California, Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. Let's now head over to Papua New Guinea where celebrations for World Environment Day continue with communities coming together to make a good and lasting impact. Igor Ortelez Quinola on Oceana at a glance. Papua New Guinea is one with the world in celebrating World Environment Day 2023, Beat Plastic Pollution. The city of Port Moresby in Papua New Guinea supporting World Environment Day continues with its citywide cleanup drive in its battle against plastic pollution. Representatives from various sectors of the community calm the streets to clean and put away plastic containers and trash. I think we can only do so much and what little we can contribute. So our way is just collecting rubbish, any plastics, anything, clearing around our vicinity. And I feel like a little contribution goes a long way. The energy system is uh, we can we can we can um, blame the engineering, but it's partly our our people's fault where we throw rubbish everywhere like carelessly. That's blocking the drainage system. As an organization, Daytech is committed to uh, contributing to the social and uh, environmental um, obligations, achieving that fight that NCDC is trying to do. Meanwhile, the grand celebration of World Environment Day in Port Morrisby commenced with an 8-kilometer walk and morning exercises sponsored by the Active City Development Program. United Nations Development Program resident representative Drick Bagener presented ways of conserving the environment. Plastic is everywhere. We are producing too much of it. It litters our oceans, it litters our beaches, our forests, our streets, our villages. 
So it inspires me to come here today and to see so many people who actually came together to take action. There's a lot of talk about recycling, but we've also heard that actually much of the plastic is not recycled. It all ends up in a landfill or is even burnt. So we have to reduce it, we have to avoid it in the first place and look for alternatives. For us, one of those things is like obviously to inspire action, to stop using plastic, but most importantly is to create a big awareness that using plastic is really uh, quite damaging to the environment and to the people. But Mosby, please, don't use plastic too much. Try as much as possible to carry one water, bo water bottle that you can recycle and avoid using single-use plastic. Governor Poe Sparkop says these two events are ways to remind the community to keep the surrounding clean, safe, healthy, and green. Eko Hortaleza Kinyola, Port Morrisby, Papua New Guinea, Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. In observance of the National Immigrant Heritage Month, we ask our immigrant friends a few questions. One of which is, how important it is to celebrate and pass down their heritage as they live a life in what many of them consider a foreign land. Here's Arlino Campo on What Do You Think? A celebration of immigrants and refugees in our country. An opportunity to explore and understand their background. National Immigrant Heritage Month is celebrated here in the U.S. every June since 2014. This month creates awareness about how diversity and immigration are both essential elements of social connection. Let's hear what brought some immigrants to the U.S. Because America, it has like better opportunities, better life. That what attracted me to come over here. So in 1988, after I finished my undergraduate degree in India, I wanted to pursue higher education. So I came to America to do PhD. I went to the United States in 2007 and I was one of the lucky teachers that were selected to teach in Prince George's County Public Schools District. Yeah, I come here to make my future bright and here is a lot of opportunity. So I want to continue my further studies, bachelor degree, and get quality education. While they all had different reasons in coming to America, they all have something in common. They never forgot their heritage. For me, it's a little bit difficult to preserve our culture, but somehow in our area, there are lo lots of um, Nepalese community so we can celebrate. I have a lot of uh, friends um, from India and we meet regularly. Because I work in a, in a school where we bring some food, we sometimes wear our costume, like we just celebrated our multicultural activity and we even showcase a Filipino folk dance called Komintang. Uh, now a uh, lot of Nepali people, they live in uh, USA and we have like small community. It is important to share our heritage to pass it to our next generation through our communities. The heritage so who we are and where we came from, we want to pass uh, those things to our future generation. So it's very uh, important to preserve our heritage over here too. This month is a call to embrace the nation's diverse and varied immigrant communities. After all, the courage to reach their dreams built America. Arlino Campo, Fort Washington, Maryland, Eagle News, we live in extraordinary times. In Seattle, Washington, the famed Pike Place Market is celebrating its golden year. Let's join Ariel Castro and find out what spectators are in for. Here's Adventure Awaits. We're here at Pike Place Market where the air is filled with anticipation and a sense of nostalgia. This weekend the market will be celebrating 50 years of preservation, marking a remarkable achievement in ensuring the preservation of this beloved institution. It, with its rich heritage and vibrant atmosphere, has been a hub of activity for locals and tourists alike. It has stood the test of time and has become a symbol of the city spirit. 
Place Market is more than just a market, it's a symbol of Seattle's heritage. Preserving it ensures that future generations can experience the same magic we've enjoyed. The preservation of Pike Place Market for the past 50 years is a testament to the dedication and passion of the community. It has been a collective effort to ensure that the market remains a thriving cultural and economic center. Visitors can expect a range of activities including live music performances, culinary demonstrations by local chefs, and a showcase of the market's rich history through art exhibitions. Market vendors are also gearing up for this milestone celebration. Many of them have been part of the Pipe Place Market for years, providing the community with fresh produce, artisanal crafts, and unique experiences. The celebration will not only be a joyful gathering, but also an opportunity to acknowledge the challenges faced by the market over the years. It serves as a reminder of the importance of community spirit in preserving historic landmarks. It's wonderful to see the community coming together to celebrate its 50 years of preservation. Ariel Castro, Seattle, Washington, Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. Before we let you go, here's our photo of the week. What you see is the orange sky over New York City. This was taken Wednesday when smoke from Quebec's wildfires reached the eastern U.S. Thank you, Joe Juan Soriano, for this photo. Thank you all for joining us again. If there are stories or topics you want us to share with you, just comment below. View, like, share our other shows. See the limits with Alan Basiliahe. Connected with Dr. David. Take a seat and join us with Anna Kui. Play date with Mike Hudson and friends. Plus, journey stories of Filipinos abroad with Kathleen Cruz. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter at Eagle News Live. I am Jeff Sinidad. We live in extraordinary times. Stay happy and healthy, everyone.